What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is 90 Day Fiance, Season 6, Episode 11. I'm behind. I'm going to get caught up. Let's roll with it. So, we start off with Mike and Natalie. Listen, Natalie went to have her surgery, and Mike has no idea where she is. He said the night before her surgery, they drove up to Seattle, but then they ended up getting into an argument about, um, about Oklahoma. Listen, Y'all still arguing about shit that happened at Thanksgiving with your mama. At the end of the day, it is what it is. Either y'all just going to agree to disagree and move on. But who the hell got time to keep arguing over the same thing over and over again? Your mama called me a whore. My mama didn't call you a whore. You know what? At the end of the day, if production ain't going to roll the tape back, then deal, pretend like there wasn't no cameras there. And y'all just got to deal with it. Your mama said she ain't do it. You heard her. We know Natalie be, be messing stuff up. We know she hears things wrong. The reality is, unless production edited it out, I didn't hear her call her um call her no damn hoe a whore or a prostitute or whatever the heck um she said mike said they got into an argument and she ended up going to her friend's house her friend that lives there in seattle and he was like and i ain't heard from her i'm calling her she's not answering the phone i don't even know what time she's supposed to be at the hotel i mean be at the hospital now this one mike i'm gonna put on you how you didn't know like it was the day before her surgery how did you not know what time she had to be at the hospital? Even if y'all hadn't gotten into an argument, you should have known what time she had to be at the hospital. It was literally the day before the damn surgery. Anyway, he got production driving him around the parking lot so he can look for his truck. Because he was like, she don't want to answer my calls and she want to go ghost? Cool. I'm going to get up out of here. I'm going to take my toys and I'm going to go home. And then about halfway down the road, he decided, you know what? Let me go ahead. I'm being petty. I'm going to go ahead because at the end of the day, she's going to be getting out of surgery and she's going to really need need somebody. So he ends up going back. And it's funny that the hospital called him when it was time for her to leave, but they ain't called her friend. So I was like, now, Natalie, what was you going to do? The, Nat the hospital called Mike when it was time for you to go. What if Mike had gone back home? You'd have been stuck like Chuck. Both of y'all is simple. So he gets her back home, and of course, nothing he does is right. She's still fussing. She still got an attitude. She's still nasty. Mind you, he is taking care of you. He made her a Russian dish of boiled potatoes, uh, pickles, and mushrooms. I'd never heard of it before, but she was eating it up like it was the best thing she ever had in her life, okay? So anyway... Listen, that is Mike and Natalie. I, I know on the next episode some stuff goes down. We'll get there when we get there. Next we have um, Jovi and um, Zara. Yara. They're picking Jovi up from the, um, from the airport. He's been gone for months and months and months. He don't even know where he lived now because she done moved the whole apartment while he was gone. And everybody's excited to see him. And his dad, who does the same job that he does, was like, listen, this is hard on the family. Like, when I, when, you know, when my kids were growing up, I would leave and come back. And literally, my kids had grown. Like, I could physically see differences in them. And it, he was like, you know, and I feel like it's a good living. I feel like they make good money doing it. But it, it, it's just hard. He said it's just, it's just really, really hard. Um... So they get to the airport, and of course, everybody's happy, and Yara's crying, and Jovi's happy to see the baby. I feel like he's more happy to see the baby than he is to see Yara, and as a matter of fact, he said he was more happy to see the baby than he was to see Yara, but I, you know, listen, whatever. So then they end up taking him to his new home, which of course, he had no idea where he had moved to, and I feel like he likes the apartment. I feel like he just doesn't like the location, and he told her that he did not want to move too far out of the city and from the way they described it he's like 30 40 minutes outside of the city now yara's thing is you don't need to be in the city you married with a kid what you gonna do you don't need to be out partying you don't need to be in the city and him being 40 minutes away may not be that may not have been that big of an issue if he had a car but i feel like they uber everywhere so he doesn't have a car because you know 40 minutes is what in the suburbs like that's that's suburbs you know what i'm saying like but I feel like because he doesn't drive, you know, now that's a whole nother conversation, Ubering back and forth. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, they show him walking around the apartment. And I, I like I said, I think he likes the apartment, but he doesn't really want to get into whether he likes it or not because he doesn't like the location. So I'm sure that's going to be a, a whole situation. I'm sure that's going to be a whole situation. Elizabeth and Andre, listen. 
They finally make it up here to D.C. She got an Airbnb in D.C. She said it's a big enough house for everybody. And she asked the guy, the you know, the person that they were renting the house from, that they were getting the house from, did they have parking for an RV because they were going to be driving an RV. The guy told her yes. First of all, they're going to tell you what you need to hear because they're trying to rent the damn house. That's number one. Number two, maybe there is a place where you could have parked that daggone big ass RV, but they got there in the middle of the night while everybody was home. Now listen, I'm gonna tell you about DC. There are some parts of DC where you've got parking, street parking. There are a lot of places in DC, especially now with gentrification, where there is no street parking. Okay, you got zone parking. Some people have driveways depending on what neighborhood you go into. So, and and there are streets in DC that are two-way streets that really should be one-way streets, especially when everybody's home from work and everybody done parked on the street. It looks like whatever part of D.C. they were staying in is one of those areas because if he was trying to get that damn RV down the street, baby, it was tight. And he damn near was hitting people's, you know, cars. Thank God he didn't hit nobody's car because it was tight, okay? Um, so now he's fussing and cussing. He's mad. He's irritated. And they're yelling at Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was like, listen, I asked the right questions. It's not my fault if the person mis misrepresented the location. I asked him, was there parking for an RV? I asked him, you know, and so now they get to arguing and they're snapping at each other. So the brother-in-law gets on his good old app, probably Expedia, TravelocityHotels.com, and he finds him a damn hotel, okay? And he said, listen, we got a hotel in Waldorf, Maryland. Now, I know where Waldorf, Maryland is. That was about 40, he, he said it's about 40 minutes from where we are. So Waldorf, Maryland is suburb, suburb. I feel like either two things happen, because there are plenty of hotels in D.C., and they have parking, you got to pay for it, but they would have parking for the RV. I feel like two things were going on. Either one, he just put in Washington, D.C. hotels and he was looking for a particular price point. And the first price point that popped up, that's something that was in their budget, that's where he went, which would have taken him further and further outside of the city. Or where they were staying is close to Waldorf. Because between D.C. and Waldorf, Maryland, there are a million and one hotels that they could have stayed at that weren't really expensive, that, you know, were probably within whatever price point. I feel like where they were going was closer to this part of um, Maryland, right? Anyway, um, and it is about 40 minutes outside of, you know, D.C., depending on what part of D.C. they were in. It, it's about a 30, 40-minute ride. Um, and so Andre was, he was irritated because he was like, I'm tired. Ain't nobody trying to drive another 40 minutes. No, Andre was like, let's go. The men were like, let's go. The women were complaining because they were tired. The kids were cranky, but they were like, listen, this just isn't going to work. Like at the end of the day, this ain't going to work. So I don't know what else you want. We got to make it do what it do. We got to do the best that we can with what we got here. So they end up booking the hotel. And it's funny because I know where that hotel is. I can tell about stuff. I know where that hotel is. Um, they get to the hotel and now the brother-in-law and Andre are kind of on the same page. And the brother-in-law was even like, listen, I don't even like agreeing with Andre. But on this one, I was with him. Like, it is what it is, you know. And they're making it seem like Elizabeth purposely booked this place that wasn't going to be accommodating. And I'm like, I'm sure she didn't do it on purpose. At the end of the day, it, it wasn't done purposefully you know anyway so later on in the episode they end up meeting up with the family the aunts and stuff like this i guess it's like a pre um pre um family reunion type dinner the night before and they're at his aunt's house and the brothers did remember the brother flew in brother was like i'm not getting on the rv with no andre for two days that's not gonna happen so he flew in so he was already there and we meet his aunt well it would be Elizabeth's great aunt and her grandfather, the father's father. And so they're all there. And of course they have to start talking about the family business and how Andre wants to get into the family business. And he just wants to take over and he just wants to be in charge. And so they end up in this big argument. Now listen, let me say this. I get it that they prop that they were, you know, they brought it up and, you know, it probably wasn't the conversation that needed to be had in that environment, in that setting. Like it, it, it really wasn't that appropriate, but Andre, you have to know respect. You were so disrespectful in front of the grandfather, the matriarch of this family. Like how, that was so disrespectful for you to just be cussing. And then you going to tell, and then you tried to fight the brother talking about, well, come on, let's do it, let's do it. And the father is like, um, y'all are disrespectful in front of my father. Like y'all are disrespect, y'all ain't just disrespecting me anymore. He disrespected my damn dad. And my aunt. And we're in her house. I mean, they're cussing and everything else. I was like, this is so ridiculous. 
so freaking ridiculous. Child, anyway. Lord. Down to South Africa, we are dealing with Tiffany and Ronald. Now, listen, let me say this. I am tired of Tiffany testing Ronald to see if he's ready to be a father. At the end of the day, you ain't moving to South Africa. His visa probably ain't going to get approved for him to come to the United States. So y'all need to make some decisions, okay? Because you keep taking him places and want to see how he's going to spend his money and want to see if he's going to be responsible with his money and if he's going to have enough money to take care of y'all. At the end of the day, you know he wants to impress y'all. You know he wants you to stay. So he wants to try to make this as nice and as fun of a visit as possible. This is not a real visit. This is Y'all ain't seen each other in a year. He takes y'all to a Christmas store. You expect him to go to a Christmas store during Christmas and not get excited. And the kids not want to buy stuff and buy, buy decorations. Now, granted, did he overspend? Probably. But that's what we do on vacation. We spend too much damn money. Who doesn't come back from vacation realizing, damn, I probably spent too much money. We all do it. So, Tiffany, chill out. You are just looking for an excuse to leave and an excuse to say, Ronald, this ain't going to work. That's it. That's all. Because he's going to buy, I mean, child, I'll go to the Christmas store and act a daggone fool, okay? So later on, they go to the, um, I guess it's an elephant sanctuary. When I was in Kenya, we went to an elephant orphanage. And there were el baby elephants there, and it was a rhinoceros there, and all that stuff. So I feel like it's something similar to that um, that they have in South Africa. Um, and she said at first she wasn't excited to go. She didn't think she was going to have a good time. But then... She did enjoy herself, you know, um, and his mom ended up going. Now, she was saying that Ronald was being father of the year when his mother was around, making it seem like he does all this stuff and he's such a great dad. She was like, oh, he's father of the year all of a sudden now, now that his mom is here, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, now, is that really fair? I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. But is that fair to him? If he's trying, he's trying. And maybe his mother is giving him a little bit of extra motivation. But if he's trying, he's trying. Like, I think sometimes we get so caught up on things not... And I'm I'm guilty. I'm so guilty. But I think sometimes we have stuff in our mind and we get so caught up on it not looking the way we thought it was going to look or wanted it to look that we don't even accept it is what it is. And we appreciate it is what it is. Anyway... So the mother says, listen, so she's complaining to the mom about Ronald not doing this and Ronald not doing that. And it's not, you know, he's overspending and he's doing too much and he's this, that, and the other. And he's not helping me with the kids. And, you know, the mother was like, well, he looks like he's pretty helpful to me. I'm like, yeah, because you're sitting there and he's trying to impress you, mama. Okay, he's trying to impress you. So she says, listen. Would it help if I took the kids with me tonight so y'all could have like, you know, a romantic evening and y'all could spend the night together and, you know, do whatever married couples do, you know, by yourself. She said, I would love to have my kids, you know, have my grandkids. I would love, she said, it would be my pleasure for them to spend the night with me. So she takes him up on it. And when, you know, they're getting ready to leave because he wasn't there, obviously, for this conversation. So she says, your mom is going to take the kids so that we can spend some time alone together. You know, won't, isn't that nice? Well, now he's got an attitude because he's like, well, nobody asked me. And if we're doing this together and we're in this together, nobody asked me. Nobody asked me. And I'm just like, see, here we go again. Do you want a night alone with your wife or not? It happens all the time. But I do see his point on it. Like, listen, if we, you know, if I'm father and I'm 50%, why wouldn't you run it past me? But then I'm like, but it's your mama. Like, it's, it's, it's your mama. Anyway. um, Okay, so that's them. So As Asulu and, um, what's her name? Um, oh, shoot. Asulu and his wife. They're out look, shopping for a car. Remember, he got into the car, so the car accident and he totaled the car. So they're out shopping for a car. But he's going to get another minivan because they want to have another baby. But my thing was, and I guess it don't matter if you Ubering, but, you know, I was like, you know, once you Ubering, like, don't you want something that's a little more Uber friendly? But again, I, you know, I guess you can get more passengers or maybe you can make airport runs or whatever with a, with a, with a minivan. Kalani. I salute with Kalani. So... But they're still in a good place after, you know, they had their little romantical weekend. They're still in a good a good place, a good setting. And until his mama called. 
his mama calls she's visiting the sister and he wants she wants to come and see him before she goes back to samoa and she's making little smart comments about how he ain't taking care of her and he ain't doing this and he ain't doing that and we already know how that went down last season honey so she, he was like well you can come but my sister can't come because you know sister threatened to fight kalani on site told her it was on site and so the mother was like well how else am i gonna get there like if if she don't bring me how am i gonna get there so then he was like, all right, fine, then, you know, I'll go ahead and, you know, get y'all a hotel so y'all can come visit, but I really don't want, I mean, he said it in a nice way, but basically he was like, I don't want no bullshit. Like, she can't come down here with all that rah-rah. And of course, the mother's trying to make it seem like, you know, Kalani's gonna have to be the one to be nice. And he was like, no, you're gonna, you know, respect my wife, you're gonna respect my home. Like, you're not gonna come down here with that rah-rah like y'all be trying to do. So, um... We'll see how that roll out, child. We will see how that rolls out. All right, then we have Julia and Brandon. Honey, they done found them an apartment. They done, they done found an apartment. They done signed the lease. So they invited their parents to come over and see the apartment. And of course, you know their parents was hating. Oh, it's so small. Oh, it's this. Oh, it doesn't have enough windows. Oh, where's the fire escape? Oh, we're worried about your safety. I mean, it sure doesn't compare to 10 acres. 10 acres of a farm that belongs to y'all and not them. 10 acres of shit that they got to shovel, literally, to stay there. Like, just hating, 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 hating. So then Brandon finally says, well, I mean, we already signed the lease. And they were like, you signed the lease? What? You signed the lease? He was like, yeah, we moving in two weeks. Well, that's just not much notice. He gave y'all notice when y'all was sitting there arguing and he said, well, we're just going to move out. You didn't believe him. You didn't think he could do it. You didn't think he could afford it. And instead of, you know, trying to be there and support him and understand that he's a newlywed and maybe him and his wife want some privacy and want to have their own life, y'all try to make this man feel guilty because he actually stood up and became a man because the fact that y'all were, you know, the one thing y'all y'all were clowning him about the fact that he's never paid any real bills and now he's trying to do it and now it's a problem. Listen, his parents are a whole lot. I've been talking about them since last season. His parents are too much. Angela and Michael, listen, I'm over Angela and Michael. Angela, you are a nasty-ass woman. Oh, you are nasty. And again, maybe it's the editing, but you mad because the man ain't called. You done blocked him on all of the apps, so he can't get to you. So now he's been calling your daughter. And your daughter is like, can you please talk to Michael? Because I am sick of, I'm not your marriage counselor, and I'm sick of playing, you know, in the middle of this situation. Can you call your husband? So she calls Michael, and... Again, the way it's edited, I'm going to give benefit of the doubt that there was some editing in this. But from what I can tell, you didn't even get that man, barely get that man a chance to say, hey, how was your day, before you start going in on him. I mean, and then you're cussing at him, you calling him all kinds of this, you calling him out his name, and then talking about some, and people act like, that I'm, that you're so nice to me. They don't know that when I call you a bitch, you call me a bitch back. You're not supposed to. And my daddy, if my daddy were alive, my daddy would beat your ass. My daddy would smack you across the face. See, you one of those women that feel like it's okay for you to do and say anything you want to somebody and they not supposed to respond back and they not supposed to say nothing back. Ma'am, that's not how this works. And you are disrespectful as hell to this man. And that's just not how this works. That's not how any of this works, ma'am. And even the producers were like, well, what what, might, what should Michael say? Well, he should have said, I'm sorry. But from what I can tell, you ain't getting a man a chance. I mean, I don't know if his intention was. The minute he answered the phone, you started yelling at him about calling your daughter and bringing her into it. And he was like, but you got me blocked everywhere else. I don't care. I don't care. So then the argument starts. And I'm like, at what point was he supposed to apologize? When? When? Please tell me at what point you gave him an opportunity to apologize. Because I didn't see it. Child, anyway, that's it. We're going to get caught up, child. We're going to get caught up. That's it. That's all. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in those comments. Peace.